Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Hey yo man, it's your time. And fuck poverty. This money, man. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Film Leroy the Judgmental Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Phil in the house. And I'm Leroy. So, what's going on, Phil? Ain't that much chilling. Okay, you just finished eating brunch, right? Yep. It's 11 o'clock. That's breakfast. No, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) To me, to me, it's from six, I want to say six to 10 30. Okay, but why some of the the the, uh, the restaurants stop serving breakfast at twelve o'clock? They just trying to get extra money. That's breakfast. No, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> they do that so they can sell the uh, late stragglers, the leftover shit that they made, the extra stuff that's already okay. cooked up instead of throwing it out. Uh huh. So they so that that that's not a that's not called breakfast then. Why do you, why are you don't call it brunch? Because they're being stupid. They know it's brunch. <laughs> well, we gonna do something different. There's a show on own network called uh, All the Single Ladies. <laughs> One of my favorite shows to look at because it's like the people there is some of the women over there is insane. So, uh, discretion for everyone. I watched this episode, but Philip hasn't. Uh, this is episode season one, episode seven. So we're gonna play the whole thing. And what is it called? All the single, all ladies? The, all the single ladies. Yes, like the Beyonce song. Uh, uh so we're gonna uh, go through this episode, and we'll have us uh, come in, <laughs> come in on it. <laughs> Here we go. I am 36 years old, and I'm a children's book author. You know how... So Jasmine is 36 year old, and uh, oh, what, what do you say how she looked to you? She looked good, right? She's nice looking. Okay. Do I need to give you a number? You want to? Oh, it's up to you. How you how are you trying uh, to do it? No, you don't have to give a number. All right. A lot of women, they just chase ballers because that's the thing they do. Oh, I want a basketball player. For me, you know, I'm tall. I'm 5'10". A lot of times the guys I felt looked good with me were taller guys. So I was into basketball players. Oh, well, so there's no other men that's tall other than basketball players? She made it seem like this is what all the girls talk about. And then she turned around and said, well, because I'm tall, that's what I wanted. <laughs> and then I came out to L- <laughs> L.A. And, you know, I met... This guy, Kendrick, he was six foot five. Oh, muscles, tatted, brown eyes, like. You miss her some Kendrick, huh? Smooth, bald <laughs> hair. Is so talking black. about him? Man, like they have a thing. Like the way the shea butter just melts in their pores. They're just a vibe. So he was just, he was a vibe. I fell for the vibe, along with plenty of other women. My name is Taylor. I'm 31 years old. I grew up in Ocean. So Taylor is 31 years old. Uh, she's like one of these uh, earthy, like uh, animation type of uh, women. She has her hair uh, cornrows and it's like butterflies in it for barrettes. <laughs> Yarn, all type of colors. Yeah, yeah. She's like one of these like comic book anime uh, type of women. Township, New Jersey, and I am the Sparkle Queen, which means I have a biodegradable glitter business that I started myself about five years ago. I get approached mostly by white men, European men, foreign men, more so than I do black men. So it's like, hot is hot. If you're attractive, then you're my type. Have you ever had an experience where you were in love with somebody for quite a significant period of time and then you actually got them? That was Trevor for me. I'm a nurse. My background is definitely, you know, Southern, sweet manners, hospitality. You want to present yourself as a lady at all times. If a male talks to me, he has to approach me, he has to ask. So Lauren, she didn't give her age. Uh, very pretty. Very pretty, right? Yeah. Uh, pretty. I wouldn't go very, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who's very pretty to you? Out of these girls? No, just in general. Um, I'll I come back to you on that one. 
<laughs> I mean, you know, for my number or to go out. If he wants to talk on the phone, he has to call me. I'm not going to look for him because if a man wants you, he'll let you know. So no, Sebastian yeah. was a blind date. The reason why I was attracted to him is because he made his intentions known like from day one he wanted to be in a relationship with me but we became inseparable after that i mean we moved in together after six months and because i was so inexperienced at that point i didn't see things about him that were a little bit different from other men inexperienced in what ready for you my name is lashaya i'm 41 years old and i'm a court liaison uh, yeah I'm uh, Lazaya. Serious tattoo she got on her thigh. Yeah, she got a nice little dress on with a tattoo running down her leg. She's thirty-one. Uh, nice looking, nice looking. No, no, uh, uh bad looking women on this episode. I must say. Oh, is beautiful on you. Wow. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about George. <laughs> it's been a roller coaster. Let's just say How that. How old you say she He's, was? Uh, forty-one. Okay. Between George and I for about 20 years <laughs> when we first met. I used to love roller skating. The skating ring it was like the it place in the 90s. And George and his best friend would be there. I was probably at the time about uh, 16, 17. And we skated. We skated like Friday through Sunday. So it was two, three times a week. We would hang out at the skating ring, get to know each other. He was really like this mystery guy because unlike everyone else who lived at home with their parents, he had his own apartment. He was very independent. So George is a hustler. He has his own apartment and she's, uh, what'd she say? She met him at 16. Mm -hmm. So obviously George is uh, an adult over 18 if he got his own crib. So uh, what we always say is the same thing we always say about uh, women with messing around with older men is very common. Here we have uh, Nia Long talking about how she was going with a dude in her, in her 30s and he went to the mom and the mom accepted it. Right. So very, it's, very it's, calm. It's, it's, it's cool when they're young and they do that. But when they get older, then they pretty much don't like seeing other young girls doing the same thing that they were doing. Right. And when and when Nia Long said it and nobody said uh, ill or boo, everybody was just, ah! <laughs> you know, very common. So Why I don't do wanna... that laugh. Is that the, the girl laugh you do? Uh, well, that's what all they did when, when she said yeah, it. But you don't got to laugh like that. You sound like damn Wizard of Oz witch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how they said it. So, yeah, it's very common that uh, young girls mess with these old men. Because uh, women is all about money, right? Getting money, right? So mm-hmm. if you a teenager, if you 15, 16, what 15, 16 year, year old male is making a whole bunch of money? Mm-hmm. P- driving a car, picking you up from school, taking you out to nice restaurants and dinner and dates and stuff. Because somebody that's the same age in middle school or high school, they can't afford that unless they're older and they are out of school and getting money. Yep. Kind of like in the streets, so I was like, oh, like he was intriguing a little bit. Like that mystery of not knowing all was also like the I want to know a little bit more about him. When I- <laughs> so she didn't know he was out there slanging and banging, huh? <laughs> oh yeah. Met him. He was an athlete. All of these women were all over him. So I felt chosen. You know, I felt like, wow, oh, really he could have all of these girls, but I was the one he settled down with. So even having that yeah, he just wanted you on the team. So did you think she didn't know that or she knew it was up? Mm-hmm. You, that's what I mean. Like, so when these girls get with these NBA players that's traveling from city to city, like this ain't just happened. This shit was going on since Will Chamberlain was playing. You got to know what you're getting yourself involved with. Right. And if you still chose to go down that right, you know, that route, it is what it is. When the same shit happened, you to happen to millions of girls since the beginning of the NBA started or NFL, whatever. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit ego driven um, pride over the relationship. Like, look, I got this. I got this God. You know, I was in my early 20s. That's that's the world. You want the good job and you want the good man. So I was really wrapped up into that when we first got together. We worked at the boy. She still love that dude because she yeah, just smiling. She it she it is. Exactly. <laughs> Same bar for about three summers together. He was a bartender. I was a manager. So technically, I was his boss. There was one summer where I remember just watching him 
all summer long being like, I'm so attracted to him, I want him so bad. He never really noticed me. And then over the next fall, I lost like 40 pounds. And the next thing you know, I came to work and somebody was interested, paying attention. One night, we were able to hang out with a mutual friend. There was a three of us. He was totally about me, flirting with me, touching me, dancing with me. But I remember us looking at each other at the end of the night in the back of the bar and him being like, what do you want? And I was like, I feel like we both want the same thing, but like neither of us are saying it because we don't know if we should cross that line. But I think I went to like walk away from him and he grabbed my hand and like pulled me back in and then we made out. And I'm like, oh, well, this is good. I'm getting what I wanted. He's really into me. Let's keep this going. So he was kind of my Aladdin showing Princess Jasmine a whole new world. You know, like he's taking me to the club where there's celebrities. You know, we're going to the beach. I got my bikini. He got his swimming trunks on, glistening. And just our vibe, like, you know, people in especially black relationships, you know that camaraderie, that, I remember that episode of Martin Wynn, ha, ha, ha. Like, we, we had all of that. You know, his family was amazing. Like, his dad was in the church, so we would go to church on Sundays. It was just very... Come to church shit. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they always very... act like that's, like, a big thing when they know that it's really not. They just <laughs> like to say that. Heartfelt. It was loving. He was sexy, and I was sexy, so it was extremely sexy. And in the beginning, it was beautiful. When we got married, I was like 21, and my mom's gift to us was a honeymoon package she sent us to Puerto Vallarta. We did not have sex on our wedding night. Um, he just, Sucker. you know, he went to sleep. <sighs> we were in Puerto Vallarta for probably seven days, and I think we had sex, we had sex once. 1.5, if you count foreplay. Even though there were other guys that I did date through high school, he was always that constant factor. So he was he had money. Right. there for years. We stayed in contact all the way from high school through college. I graduated, and I say to this day, if I didn't graduate college, I probably wouldn't have a child because I got pregnant graduation night. I'm about 23, 24, so seven, eight years have passed by this time. I had never even met his parents, which, Later on, we'll come back to haunt me. So this dude, you've been knowing him since you were 16 and you got pregnant by him when you're 23. So all those years, you've never met his family. That's how is that even possible? Exactly. Exactly. She, uh, and so she was in a relationship with this guy for six years after she had the baby, right? Yes. So she was messing with him in high school, got pregnant on graduation. And then was in a relationship with him for eight years and never met his family? Never. Oh, my goodness. Something wrong with her. Yes, well, as we continue. But hell, all them years, you would think they'd be trying to work on trying to be get married. All them years they've been together and she you had a kid. Like, why you... Go ahead, I mean, baby. at the graduation, if, if y'all both graduating, unless he's not graduating. No, he wasn't graduating. Okay, so... So when you're having a baby, isn't his family there or he's just not claiming a kid? Because I'm pretty sure y'all families should have ran into each other at the hospital or something. Exactly. A baby shower? Like, God damn. Right. To work together, the tension was still there. And then about three weeks later, that same mutual friend, we were all going to hang out. And so we all went out. It was a 90s-themed night at the local bar that we were at. The drinks are flowing. We're dancing. At the end of the night, we go to walk back to my place. And he decides he wants to be romantic or whatever. And he hops in the back of a pickup truck, right? And he's like, come on, let's watch the stars. So I'm like, oh, OK. We lay in the back of this pickup truck to watch the stars. And like, me being a black woman, I'm like, we're kind of trespassing here. We don't know whose car this is. So I was like, let's get out. I hop out perfectly fine and graceful. He goes to get out of the pickup truck and slips on like the wheel or something, falls and lands on his face, smack on his face. All right, <laughs> here, here's a question for you. So uh, if a black dude told her, like, let's get on top of, get, get on back in this pickup truck and look at the stars, do you think she'll do it? No. <laughs> There's blood everywhere. His out of his mouth, out of his eye, and I'm like, oh, he's literally on the ground, not moving. It's like six foot three, big guy. I'm like, oh my god, what 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 do I do? 
All right, this is the part where uh, every episode they talk about their childhood and how they grew up and all that stuff. There's always a common theme, and you, you'll get the common theme when uh, they'll tell the stories. I grew up in Washington, D.C., one of the most amazing places, and I grew up in a single-parent home. I know a lot of people try to paint that as if it's a bad thing. For me, it was a very empowering thing. My mom was an amazing mother. She was the mom at every school play. She's at every soccer game, video camera in hand. And like, she really curated a beautiful childhood for me. I got to see a woman do everything that needed to be done by herself. I needed that lesson. I needed to learn how to be independent. So I got that from being raised in a single family, fabulous household. I grew up in Los Angeles, born and raised. My dad passed away when I was eight years old, and just unexpectedly, my mom became a single parent. At age 11, I lost my grandfather. So those were two major losses of male figures that I had in my life. And it kind of taught me early, again, to just hold on to relationships, love hard, because you don't know when that moment that those relationships would end. I was raised by a single mother. She is absolutely incredible. My parents got divorced when I was eight months old, so I've never seen my family together. I've never seen my mom and dad together. The amount of times that I could say I've seen them in the same room together having a conversation, we could count them on one hand. And I'm 31. You know how psychology tells us. I said she got me beat. <laughs> you either marry your dad or the opposite. My mom. What you mean? Huh? What you mean? She said uh, she can count on one finger how many times she saw him would have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I said her number got me beat. Because you never seen your parents nope. have a conversation? Nope. Um, got with my stepdad when I was about nine years old. He's a physician back home where I live, and he influenced so much on what my expectations are of a man. My dad was kind of always doing his own thing, and my mom, I feel like, kind of pursued him more. Like, it worked there together, but I knew I didn't want to pursue a man. I knew I didn't want to have to, like, find him and look for him and, like... I would love to know what she mean by how her mom pursued the, uh, the stepdad. I would love to know what she means by that. She don't... She's she holding back information. She don't want to say what she really meant. So I'm getting that the guy already had a girlfriend or a family, and the mom kept going after him. Right. I call him. I was like, that will never work for me. And I definitely told my mom, like, you guys taught me what not to do. And her response was like, well, as long as we taught you something. <laughs> 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 so, you know, like a lot of people of color, like the situation with my dad. Doesn't like, she look just like and sound like the uh, the lady from uh, Power? Is it Power? No, it's a, uh, what's the name? Snowfall. Uh, auntie, you talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah. Did you watch that? No. Okay. You know, my mom said that there were plenty good memories shared between us. I've seen them. I've seen photos of us fishing together. I've seen photos of him holding me at Christmas. Like, I've seen all of these happy memories. But for whatever reason, the only memories of my father that I took from childhood that stuck were the ones where you know, when we visited him in prison and kind of seeing the black man who was supposed to be your everything in that situation, it, it, it hits you emotionally. Like, it didn't break me, but it was more like it was a learning lesson. I don't have a relationship with my dad at all right now. When we were children, we did have somewhat of a relationship. He would see us on birthdays and holidays, and I always was longing for more of a connection with him. You know, I, I really wanted him to be a part of my life. I really wanted to be a part of his life. I wanted to be involved with his family, and I would, you know, do whatever I could to try to achieve that. I remember calling my dad, asking him to take me to the father-daughter dinner dance as like an eight-year-old little girl, and he told me no. So it's like, that's the layering on of my relationship as it relates to men and how I... It, it's because of the mom. That's why probably why he yeah. told her no. Yeah. It, it, him and the mom was arguing, arguing or whatever, and that's why he said no. And she making it seem like she just called him out the blue and he just told her flat out no, like he didn't want to be involved right. and all that stuff. But Dated, always essentially chasing after my father's love and not receiving it back. I tell my dad that I've 
almost dated assholes exclusively because I love them because I was raised by an asshole. And to that, he replies, you shouldn't talk about your mother that way. <laughs> <laughs> way to go, dad. Because uh, just like how and, and, and that uh, mentality that she has like that makes no sense, by the way. Uh, go uh, Explain. She says she was raised by an asshole. So all she's interested in dating is assholes. That makes no sense to me. You would think because an asshole raised you, you want to stay away from assholes because you didn't like the way he, he, he raised you or you know, treated your mom. But that's the type of dudes you into. Right. It's the her, the mom and the father was going through shit. And uh, matter of fact, how you talked about the pursuing the stepdad thing, maybe that part was going on why why the mom and the father was together. May have been. The, 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 he probably she probably was his jump off and she got pregnant and he didn't want to have a baby. She kept it anyway, and that's why he was so standoffish. Mm -hmm. I would say they have a very passive aggressive relationship. I adore them. And it's just what we just said that her the mom and father have a passive aggressive relationship. So that's the reason why like he fell back on some instances, just what you said. It took me a long time to realize how much they really love each other, how much they're always gonna be together, just the commitment and loyalty they have, because I saw them being like very passive aggressive, but like it works for them. But for me, I lived in the household with that and I I didn't like it. When you don't grow up watching a woman in relation to a man, you don't grow up seeing that like submissive dynamic. So I, I looked at myself like, oh no, I don't have to be a lady. Okay, so keep that in your memory banks that she's like one of these, uh, she, well, she got size on her. She's 5'10". So you got to keep in mind she ready this, this rough and rugged, ready to uh, uh, beat down and all that shit. Just, 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 just the way she said that right there. She's telling you what type of person she is. Too aggressive and no, no, uh, feminine side. Yeah. So keep, keep that in mind. I can be just like the boys, like the same way boys. They, they see who they want. They date who they want. They sleep with who they want. I okay. So she a freak. Kind of mm -hmm. grew up with that same kind of power. So I'm kind of glad that I grew up in a home where I got the freedom to just be myself and exist. To be a Yep. My dad, he was kind of a similar makeup to my boyfriend. I mean, you see my jeans. Like, my dad was the same, you know, six foot. He was like six foot two, three, handsome guy, muscles. So, you know, me and my mom, we definitely, we got, we got caught in the same trap. I saw men in her life, only two, you know, my dad and then the next man she dated. I saw them treat this incredible woman like she wasn't the incredible woman that she was. Um, so two men treated treated this woman like a piece of shit. So what's the common denominator there? Her. <laughs> I got to see my mother get out of situations like that. So I needed that lesson. I needed to learn how to be independent. We lay in the back of this pickup truck to watch the stars. He goes to get out of the pickup truck, falls and lands on his face. So I go over to him and he's literally like, not coherent. I'm like, oh my God. So I ended up calling us an Uber to drive us 10 minutes down the road. We get him into my house. I'm telling you the next day, my house looked like a crime scene. There's just blood on the walls, everywhere. I try to clean him up. Where yeah, why not take him to take his ass to the I'm hospital? I'm about to say the same thing. Why you, why you ain't call ambulance, the cops? You gonna take him to your crib all bloody in a mess. Right. The bathroom, we're in the bathroom. He looks in his mouth. He realized he chipped a tooth. So we get him cleaned this up. He's like kind of... It's fine, not, but still yeah. kind of in and out of it. But of course, he's drunk too, so that doesn't really help. So we go to get in the bed. Mm -hmm. He's still trying to hook up with me. I'm like, you 100% have a concussion. We didn't call an ambulance. We didn't go to a hospital. I'm like, I don't know what to do, but like, we're not doing this right now. Like, please stop. <laughs> we were only married <laughs> one year. And so after he did it. Yep. <laughs> anything I was doing, but I definitely wasn't getting my needs met. I remember complaining that he didn't ever really kiss me. And he says, well, you know, married people don't do that. Nah. And I was like, oh. As I think you already know where this is going to, right? Can you guess? I got an idea. All right, you don't want to guess, you just rather just, just hear it. Yeah, just surprise uh, oh, okay. me. <laughs> okay, he just wasn't very affectionate with me and I didn't, I didn't really get it. He was also angry and like moody a lot and I didn't get that either. So when I was with Kendrick, he went overseas to, you know, Germany, Luxembourg, at one point Brazil. So he's playing basketball in these places. 
And somehow, I, I, I did not look through his stuff. I don't do that. But I found where he was sending mass inbox messages to women all over Germany. What a shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this guy's in Germany. This guy in Brazil. What you think? He just he you just know, sit in the room with, with his legs right. closed? So, so they, they're signing like eight months to a year contracts at the, at the least. So mm -hmm. he's gonna be there for that long. You think he's not gonna be talking to nobody? He's just gonna sit there and be with you. You're right. not married. This is your boyfriend. Exactly. Come you on, you didn't go with him. You didn't go overseas with him and stay with him. What do you think he's gonna do? What a shock that he was texting girls from Germany. And how the hell, if you don't supposed to be looking at stuff, you don't do that stuff. But you found out that he was he was uh chatting with girls in Germany. How'd mm -hmm. you find out, ma'am? If you normally don't look for stuff, cause she do. <laughs> trying to go on dates. And I found that, and I, I mean, that should have been a red flag. But he said that his, you know, of course, made up the story about it was his friend that did it and it wasn't him. But I'm not stupid. Like, I, I went along with it. I accepted the excuse because at that time, my self-esteem was where it was. But, you know, that was sign one that... You no, know, he got money, and that's the reason why he, he got, put like up you said, with He got shit. money. He's a tall, handsome dude. And when she met him, she said all the girls wanted him. Right. So he's supposed to just be chilling for a whole year in another country and just thinking about you? Mm-hmm. Things were kind of not as they should have been. As time went on, as I got more inquisitive once I had a daughter because I wanted to know more about him and his family. And I remember our first Father's Day together. I just started asking questions like, where's your father at? You know, what's going on with your parents? Oh, my goodness, like man. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> So they been she been knowing this dude since she was 16. She had a kid at 23. Now the kid is here. Now she's asking about his father and all that stuff. You should have been asking that when you were 16, 17. This don't make any sense. Nope. And he would always just still give me like the roundabout, oh, they're not in the picture. You know, my parents put me out when I was young, those kind of things. So I had went through it. Yeah, but you still, okay, that can happen. They might not get along, whatever. But that man's still going to have an aunt, a I'm about uncle, to say the same thing. a grandma, grandma some, right. some other a cousin, a cool cousin that you hang with and yeah. all the time and stuff like that. Please. Phone. And I found out what his mother's name was. So I decided I was going to call his mom and let her know she had a granddaughter. First of all, his mother was amazing, like super supportive, very amazing woman. His grandmother was very supportive. However, his aunt was not so much. She really was kind of nasty towards me. Like basically like I was some like kind of like little jump you. off. I think she felt like I was just somebody trying to use her, her nephew or something. Right, because he has money. He's a street dude and he was known for having money and all that stuff. So she got pregnant by him and they just automatically, since they didn't know her, they just automatically thought that uh, she just was just with him for the money or whatever and trying to get money out of him. And her thing was she really kind of wanted to know who was I? Like, what was I about? I was like, well, I'm pretty stable, unlike your nephew. You know, I had already graduated from college, had already owned my first home, had a full time career already. Got all this stuff going on with a street dude, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was doing pretty well really early. And so that kind of gave her like this, okay, well, maybe you're not such a bad girl or maybe you didn't just try to trap him. Like, of course, we ended up hooking up the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> you, you called it. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, what's the difference from last night after you cleaned him up to the next morning when he's still all busted up? Right. And probably still might might be still drunk. It depends yeah, what okay, how much I go. Right. <laughs> I remember like kissing him and like putting my tongue around his like chipped tooth. I thought it was cute at the time, but like I don't know, it was so weird. But I was like, oh, this is so great. I'm getting everything that I wanted. I really was so in him for so long. This is awesome. Everything is great. I was like ready for the fairy tale to begin. I remember the very last time that we had sex. And I felt so bad, but like he wasn't doing it for me. I felt so guilty about it that after I had sex with my husband while thinking about a man from my past, he went to sleep. I couldn't sleep. And I went to get on the computer to, I don't know, entertain myself, shop something. Uh, Eva looking at porn 
or trying to track down the dude that you were uh your past dude that you was had relations with yeah, one of us yeah and he had left um facebook open and i saw that he had been chatting with a a gay male stripper and i found that a little bit odd because i didn't think like the guy had on a thong in his profile picture like i don't i couldn't see any straight I guy just that is real. Start chatting mm-hmm. up with this guy and it didn't seem well you know they always have to go there right to me and and that's what tipped me off my husband's gay and that explains a lot okay but when y'all was courting uh dating or whatever you want to call it none of this ever popped up was y'all having relations before y'all got married because it sounded like you wasn't no and he wasn't showing no affection no attention wasn't touching her butt and none of that stuff so if he's not showing you attention before y'all get married, why would you get marry him in the first place? Exactly. And then if he wasn't kissing you before, now that y'all married, he say, "Oh, married couples don't kiss." Like, come on, girl, you, you are you that stupid? Uh, that this here's another guy that probably either has a good job and making good money and all that stuff. With women, we hold it like a badge of honor when we can hold a man down. You know, if you can be the woman that's. Look, I'm cooking for him. I'm cleaning for him. He has his dream. I'm supporting him. I'm doing everything that I it's need so to nice do. nice to say, but I ain't buying it. <laughs> and then you start buying it. From her, you mean? No, just from, mean? in general. She's saying they hold that as a badge and honor. I don't believe that. I think it sounds good when they say that, but I don't think that's true. Mm-hmm. Are seeing where he's not matching that energy. And instead of either pulling the plug or walking away, you go, okay, let me give even more of myself. Let me try even harder in the hopes that he will love you and he will treat you just as good as you treat him. For me, it was black and white. I needed to leave. We can't marriage counsel you liking men away. (laughs) I didn't confront him um, initially. I waited two months. I knew in that moment. She waited two months, huh? To finally confront him about, uh... (laughs) That it was done, but I just had to take my time to figure out where I was going to live, how I was going to eat. It was hard because that was a time that I was dealing with it by myself. And then just seeing him, you know, come in from work every day. And she wasn't working? Sound like she wasn't. Sound like he was going to live, how I'm going to eat. If you're working, you get your apartment and you feed yourself. Right. And she's too young to just be uh, sitting at home. Right. Of wanting to be physical with my husband to like definitely not wanting it. So like, and him not even knowing why, because that's a change in me that he noticed. So I told him that I knew he's attracted to men, but he didn't really believe that Does I knew. He was- um, I don't think so. Yeah, so since she had kids, I can understand her being home, you know, taking care of the kids, doing that type of stuff. Right. But if you ain't got no kids and you're young as she was, she should have been out working somewhere. Well, she, like I said, that was a a man who made good money, have a good job, made good money. And he probably told her, well, look, you don't have to work. And, Mm -hmm. you know, for women, that's like a turn on. Right. So I think all the red flags was there. But because she knew she didn't have to work or do anything, she was like, fuck it, I'm going to ride out with him. Exactly. Like like all like y'all dating and, and, and courting each other, you ain't never noticed that this dude was probably gay. And then how do she said how she was so inexperienced? But yes, yeah, she had relations with another guy, thinking about another guy. So which mm-hmm. one is it? To stick with the lie that it was, oh, this is suspicion. You're just gonna divorce me because you think. And I was like, No, I know. And he cried. He really didn't want me to leave him. But I think it wasn't me in hindsight that he was scared to lose. I think he was scared to lose the identity that he had with me. That next day, I think we did breakfast or something, and then he goes off. And in my head, I'm like, oh, my God, I totally just saved his life. What would he do without me? He's 100% going to be in love with me now because I saved his life. Jeez. And it just literally <laughs> went <laughs> nowhere. And like, basically, he kind of ghosted me, which is, like, terrible. Literally, like, breaking my heart. That was pretty much the end of our relationship. <laughs> so so he got what he wanted that after that he never talked to her again huh <laughs> clean clean well, that's what he thought it was uh huh I'm allowed to touch this <laughs> you know in a museum you can't touch nothing <laughs> and this one this is just my attitude right here like if I had to paint my attitude this would be my attitude <laughs> <laughs> 
They should name it Jasmine's Attitude. Okay. That attitude is what got you on this TV show. <laughs> So he's playing basketball overseas. And then his contract got canceled. So he came back home to Los Angeles with me. One thing about a man without money, because I, I don't date broke men. And the reason isn't because I'm a gold digger. The reason is because a lot of men, if their pockets ain't right, that's like that's like their heartstrings, like emotionally. It's almost like they won't be right. So. Oh my goodness, she's insane. So <laughs> well, my thing is, okay, he 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 lost his contract, or his contract was up, or whatever. Where where did his money go? Did his money? I'm about to say he still made good money over there, right? He came back, spirit broken. At first, I was an emotional punching bag, and then after a while, it escalated. You know, and it always starts subtle. Like it starts with someone feeling comfortable pushing you. And then once they feel comfortable pushing you, they feel comfortable hitting you. Once they feel comfortable hitting you, then they feel comfortable punching you. And now, this woman said that now all of a sudden, you know, he's upset that he lost his contract, or whatever, didn't have any money. So now he started abusing her. But yet earlier, she just already talked about how tough she was. Remember when I said keep keep that in your memory mm -hmm. bank? How tough well, she was and all that stuff. So, so he just walked in the room and punched you in the face, and you just didn't do anything bad. See, I think she's lying about that because a lot of these girls they'll they'll feel victim and they like to say that. But every time she talked about this guy, it was all smiles and cheesing and stuff. Right. So if you if he was really beating her ass the way she's trying to make it seem like now, she wouldn't want nothing to do with him. You hear her say like negative stuff about him from the door. Right. So because he lost his NBA contract or overseas contract, now all of a sudden he's depressed and he's punching on you. Mm -hmm. That don't sound right. And it's hard because you watch the same person who's being evil to you be nice and cool, like Mr. Cool Guy to everyone else. You know, be a Christian, be up in the church. But then right after he leaves, like, he punches you. So he just punched you for no reason. <laughs> I think yes, he thought so by me marrying me, that I would keep him away from men. He did choose to conceal it and try to use me as a barrier in between him and his urges, which that's not my job as a wife. Listen, did this guy that you married, did he talk about her breasts? I, did he talk about the size of her breasts? If he ain't talk about the size of your breasts, then obviously something wrong with the guy. <laughs> so you saying the same thing I'm saying. The only thing I'm saying is if he wasn't feeling on your butt, then it's probably something wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> right. She's a, a nice-sized woman, and she has large breasts. She's petite with large breasts. I don't know if they're real or fake. I can't tell. But if this dude ain't talk about the, your breasts and, uh, and all that stuff and wanting to see your breasts, then obviously something is wrong with him. He kept me in the dark. And so in that, that was the betrayal. And so I guess once it ended, and for a very good reason, it was very painful, but it didn't hurt as bad because I knew when I left him, it would give us the biggest chance to both be happy. I was at work and I had just had this intuition, leave and go to his house, like leave work now. I go to his house. And I knock on the door, and the door, nobody answers, but I hear the shower running. So I go to the window, like knocking on the door. I'm like, open the door, it's me. And when I see, it's a woman in the shower. Yep. I'm like, open the door, like, go open the door right now. And surprisingly, she went to the door. All right. They've been, they've been knowing each other since they were 16, 17, right? Uh, uh, they had a kid at 23. She had a kid at 23. Now, the kid is here already. I don't know what age this happened, this scene happened where the woman was in the house. But my thing is, don't you think they should be living together all the time? Yeah, something, something ain't right that she's leaving out. She don't want to tell us. It kind of seemed like they were just, like, hooking up every now and then or whatever. If he got his own crib all this time, they should have been living together. So you, you got a kid with him. You've been messing with this dude since he was 16, but you never met none of his family, even after the kid was born. You don't live with him. Well, shit, it sounds like y'all, like you said, y'all single, y'all doing what y'all want and hooking up when y'all want. Exactly. She opened the door and she's like, how can I help you? I let her know who I was. You know, I'm George, um, the mother of his daughter. You know, we're in a relationship. And she, she, you know, proceeds to tell me like, he doesn't have any children. 
I definitely did not want to. That's what players do. <laughs> get involved with yet another emotionally unavailable man. So I basically took a good amount of time off of dating after that to to heal myself, and I did not date anybody. I was kind of like shut down to it. And the next thing you know, it was early 2019. I was 28. Yes. For her to shut down and not date men, he must have said something to her that she don't like it. She don't want to tell us. Mm-hmm. Eight. We met outside of a bar in San Diego one night, and I'm telling you, we had a rom-com meet cute where I walked up to the top of the stairs, he was standing there, we made eye contact, and I immediately like pushed myself up and did all the things and like adjusted my outfit. I was like, okay, I have to get this guy to talk to me. And I was sitting there, it was like ready. He introduces himself and he was Italian, thick accent. On my end, it was love at first sight. I was like, I have to have him. Next thing you know, he's like, we should go inside to get a drink. And I was like, of course we should, yes. That night, we went back to his place, and I'm telling you, I did not think it was going to be anything beyond a one-night stand. But the next morning, he laid a kiss on me that it, I was weak in the knees. <laughs> and I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> that doesn't usually happen. Yo, after like free. Yep. And she having a whole lot of one-night stands, too. Yep. <laughs> like a casual hookup. So at that point, I was like, okay, maybe something will happen. I'm in the Uber, he's texting me the whole time, and like for a straight up month, he continued to text me every day, check on me, oh, I can't wait to see you again, oh, I'm gonna come visit you in LA, and I, I'm completely feeding into this, like I'm believing every single word. When I walk in the house, I notice there's no pictures. All of the pictures of the baby were missing, so I don't know, I guess he took them down when she came over. So he was definitely playing this double life, this game. Like, I'm trying to stay cool, but it just didn't work out that way. At the time, he was collecting these nice liquors, expensive bottles, and I was like, okay. So, you know, she study talking, and I'm telling her, like, leave, you know, don't say anything at this point, because you're pissing me off, and it's just- Why are you mad at her? And, and this- Say it again. I said, because that's what they do. You ever watch Cheaters? They always attack the girl, and the girl don't even know who she is or anything about her to lie. Right. Don't start talking to me. You pissing me off. See, if I was the girl, I would have never opened the door. You ain't lying. <laughs> I just let her sip the bang. Like, it ain't her house. If she she want to kick the door Same. in and all that stuff, yep. it ain't my damn house. I come. And this it's more, definitely more to this story. Mm -hmm. Get any better. And before I knew it, I take my hand and I just rake it against all of his bottles and everything breaks. So she's like, you better get here. Like, I can hear her on the phone. You better get here. She's tearing up the apartment. I was just upset. And I think it was more of a lot of hurt there. Now, see, if I'm a player, I'll be mad at the other girl. Like, why would you let her in? Yeah. Like, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have no business letting her in. Mm-hmm. Because, again, my daughter was involved. And I had been given so much trying to make it work. And just to be at that point. So she was trying so much to make it work. So they was on a rocky road or or what? She be not a lot of shit. It don't sound like a relationship to me. It don't. And that's it why she never met the family and friends or nothing. Right. After being married to a gay man, I was ready to meet a guy who was very masculine. All my dating after that was with the macho, the alpha, the arrogant even. So when I <laughs> met James, I saw that he had flaws, absolutely. But the reason why I was attracted to him is because he was masculine, he was present. We had said a no very him gay, that's all she cared about. You're right. Physical love life, James was 50. And so, you know, quite an age difference. And I think it <laughs> resonated with me because this is a guy who, when we got together, he jumped in, you know, with both feet. And with guys my age, I wasn't getting that. Like, I was kind of getting the runaround. He was extremely consistent. He called every day. He texted every day. Sometimes he would just come by Older my apartment guy with money. and bring me, yes. me food and leave. I was introduced to his business partners, his his family, his friends. You know, he took me out everywhere and 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 showed me off. And it's like, this is my girlfriend. This is Lauren, blah, blah, blah. And it was every day he was right there like, oh, yeah, I want you. James probably when bought Kendrick, things. <laughs> probably. Kendrick was hitting me. You know, at one point I did try to do the strong girl thing. And I called the police. And they took him outside, and I remember being in, in my house, like, waiting for justice. I hear the cops out there, like, laughing and joking. I remember they said, ma'am, he told us they were just love taps. 
And I'm just like, I'm sorry, officer. What what exactly is? No, they were both fighting. And yeah. she probably was the more aggressive one and all and that, that stuff. You can tell because if he was kicking her ass and the cops came, the cops wouldn't be cooking and joking out there. They would have locked his ass up. Right. And they didn't lock him up and they clowning around with him out there. Obviously, it wasn't serious or he was the one being abused. Right. And and what cop is going to say, well, ma'am, he said that those were just love taps. Mm -hmm. That don't make any sense. It's a love tap because I'm over here in tears telling you that this man is hitting She's smiling me. as she's talking. So if it was serious, she wouldn't be smiling. Right. She'd probably be damn near crying. Yeah. But uh, no, about that, that she's uh, she's the aggressive one. And that's yes. What Yes. Well, she already said it that she was yeah. like the uh, the the aggressive type. Mm -hmm. And she's uh, too aggressive. Right. And, and uh, again, the size, she she's 5'10". Mm -hmm. So ain't no way in the world this man going to be pun punching on her and she ain't going to hit him hit him back. No, she was the aggressive one and the guys the guy told the cops that. That's the why they ain't doing anything. Mm -hmm. So I asked them, you know what? I'm not asking for you to arrest him, but this is my home. I pay every bill in here, and my name is on everything. His name. Oh, see, that's why you don't live with women like that, because they all love to talk about how this is their house and their name is on everything. I say that all the time when we watch these other shows and these girls be trying to get the guy to move in their place. Nope. Don't yep. do it. His name is on nothing, and he doesn't pay a bill. So can you? So he just living in your house, huh? And he 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 was just playing basketball overseas, and he made some good money. And he comes back, and he ain't paying for not near bill, huh? She's exaggerating. He probably was sending her the money. Right. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that, that was the apartment. The apartment was theirs, but it just put it in her name. And he right. was probably all paying all the bills, like you said. When he's playing down there, he was just sending her the money to pay the bills and everything. Mm -hmm. But everything was just in her name because she had got everything. Right. You at least make him leave, and they said no you would have to formally evict him in order to make him see leave. and that's the thing right there if he was kicking her ass she wouldn't have to beg the cop to take him away yeah. she's talking about i didn't want him arrested i just want you to make him leave well if he lived there and he's not a beating your ass you can't make him leave yeah if he was beating the ass the cops would have took him she'd have bruises on it wouldn't have been no question mm -hmm. I went down to San Diego. We saw each other again. That went on for everyone who pictures she got a drink and she had the ball. Yeah. <laughs> you, you noticed that? Yes. <laughs> months where we would see each other like every couple of weeks. It was great. Like it was literally everything that I thought I wanted. We saw each other in San Diego for Comic Con. He came. He stayed over with me. We. Well, she likes cosplaying, as we see in that picture there. Mm -hmm. Even sat and had like you know, the State of the Union conversation of what is this? What are we doing here? Because, like, I made him do that before we hooked up. Sure I was like, did. I have so many things that I want to say to you. Y'all talk about <laughs> anime. You ain't got to lie. Yep. Next thing you know, you give me an orgasm, and I forget all those things that I wanted to say to you. So I'm like, we're not doing that this time. We're going to talk. We're going to have this conversation about where are we, what are we doing. So it was a one-night stand, and you wanted to break down, like, what do you, future goals and all that stuff? And then he, the guy just... State of the Union, politics... Right. The, the guy just had sex with you and you just forgot everything, huh? Mm -hmm. It sounded like whenever he came to town, he hooked up with her. They ain't wasn't really spending a lot of time just hooking up. Whenever she went down to wherever he had, they hooked up. And that's yep. why she don't know all his views on life and shit. Yep. We agree that, like, you know, we're hooking up. It's still casual, but maybe one day there could be a relationship because he was supposed to be moving a little bit closer to L.A. from San Diego. He's only going to be, like, an hour away. And I'm hearing in my head, I don't want a relationship right now instead of, I don't want a relationship with you. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the part where they talk about how they uh, ended things. So I found out that James only stays with women for 12 months because I asked him. Now I realize that's a very important question to ask when you're getting to know a man. What's their longest relationship? And depending on their age. No, that means nothing. I don't think that's a big deal. Age. You should see like, some years. It sounds like James scoop up a young girl. He see if he can maintain it for a year. If he can't make it past a year, he done with her and he move on to the next. Right. You don't have to ask the man how long how long was his last relationship. But it don't matter. He he could have been with the with, with his his last relationship could have been 15 years. Right. And, and that's why on that other show that we watched, she uh she said she's is one of her concerns because the guy said he never been in love. So who cares? He even never been in love before. He's thirty nine. He never been in love, and that's my concern. 
Well, if he was madly in love with somebody, he wouldn't be with you. He'd be probably with that girl. Right. Behind it. So when I asked him after we were already together, what's your longest relationship? He told me 12 months. Matter of fact, oh, he actually shit, said <laughs> the best relationship I've ever had with a woman um, is my housekeeper. I've had my housekeeper for 10 years. And then during our relationship, <laughs> Go ahead, play it, James. <laughs> he got an argument with her about the cost of cleaning up a third house that he owned and he fired her and he actually felt really good about firing her. Like he loved to fire people. He loved to get rid of people. He felt like that was his power um, of being a millionaire. And I remember. Mm -hmm. Well, we see her type is she, she want to do with money. Mm -hmm. One of and she will take anybody's shit just to have well, that she lifestyle. Said she stole all the red flags, but she didn't care as long as he was macho. Right, right. But that's what comes with being macho. They fire people. They act like jerks. The probably lamest things he said to me that he thought was cool. He said, um, you know, you won the lottery. <laughs> you have enough money to fix all of your problems. And that turned her on. So when he said that to her. Yeah, exactly. She's making it seem like that's the lamest thing. But after he said that, you, you ruled out with him. Yep. That turned her on so much. And I want to be honest with you. I don't have really anything going on as far as real problems. But the thing is, when he said that, I knew he'd said it like 50 times before. <laughs> I hope. <back. laughs> on a trip to go to another line to get him. Yep, yep, exactly. Dad would turn, uh, I can fix all your problems. You don't have to worry about nothing, please. And that's Soon. why she was like 24 and staying at home with no kids and no job. Yep. As soon as he said that, they got right in bed with each other. For festival. And I remember he's texting. Or on the couch or standing up or in the kitchen. Whatever it was, they was banging. <laughs> me. He's like, I can't wait for you to get back. I'm I'm here waiting for you. He was telling me how as soon as I get back, he's going to come meet me. And literally the guy that I'm in love with at this point is telling me how he's here waiting for me. And I'm like, this is perfect. Amazing. I can't wait to get back. I land in L.A. The next day comes and goes. I hear nothing. Whole week went by after he was supposed to come and see me. And he still had said nothing to me. So at this point, I'm angry. I'm pissed off. And I'm starting to get the hint that, like, this has all been he sent him like a very angry text, like, you're such an ass. I can't believe you blew me off like that. Completely disregard my time. Blah, 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 blah. This whole thing. Still nothing. People look at women, and even at the time, I think some of my friends looked at me like I was stupid. But you do sometimes feel trapped. I mean, a part of the trap is psychological. But in order for you to... How are you trapped when you got all the money and, and it's your house? What are you trapped in? Yeah, she's doing a whole bunch of lying get justice you have to blow up the spot like i finally got out of that situation because i had to meet his crazy with my crazy and i mean it came he had to meet your crazy with his crazy that you got the wrong you got to reverse it came down to you know kind of tina turner style where she's like come on i like up oh, here we go see now she mentioned in the tina turner when uh, tina turner beat uh when they got ahead of that fight that was in a limo, right? When yeah. they was in a limo fighting? Mm -hmm. There you go. You know, I had one of those nights where he's taking a hit and I grabbed one of these big fans that used to be on the floor. We had one and I just start swinging it. And I think I like crashed the laptop and I called his Psycho. friend mm -hmm. and some of his family members. And I just start telling him everything that was going on. I'm like, your friend, your homie, he's hitting me, he's pushing me. Get him out of my house, come to my house now. And, and finally, they came over, like his people came over and got him. And that's how I finally got rid of him. The final straw in our relationship, I find out he has another daughter that's like maybe a year or two younger than my daughter. <laughs> and I was like, who? You know, who, who is this kid? He was like, oh, I used to take her to the baby's birthday party every year. And I was like, you said that was your goddaughter. <laughs> like, you never said that, that was your biological child. And the dude's in the street. He doing street shit. And she was with him. She knew what was up. They were anytime, 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 anytime a guy got a kid with him talking about this is my goddaughter, that's just in the signal to these females. Because females the only one was believing in all this guy parent stuff. Right. Ain't no guys bringing no kid everywhere talking about this is my guy kid. Like, where's her parents? You said that was your goddaughter. Like, you never said that that was your biological child. 
and come to find out that in addition to that daughter, it was like two, three more children. So at this point, when I look back, everything I knew about him was a lie. Yeah, like you ain't even know his parents. So what the hell? Yeah, my it man got is. five or six kids, and you ain't think he had no kid but except the one you got. <laughs> and he in the street. <laughs> it was probably 11 and a half months. So we were we were almost at a year. He convinced me, like, hey, sell your car. Um, and no. you can just drive one of my cars. Yeah. I was like, okay. So I was kind of depending on him to... So she did it. She ain't say I did it. Yeah. Why? Exactly. Why would you do that? She, if he said, you can have one of my cars, all right, cool. I'm going to put my car in the garage. I'm not going yep. to just be assed out driving around in your car and I didn't give up my car. Well, n- nine times... even married. It's one thing if y'all was married. Nine times out of ten, that car, the, the guy's car was better than hers. Oh, yeah. That's what she was thinking oh, yeah. about. And she didn't have to pay for anything. You know, he'll pay for, you know, the maintenance or, or insurance or whatever and all that yeah. type of stuff. It's, it's almost the same as living with somebody. Like, if it ain't yours and you don't have no claim to it, they can kick you out. You driving around in the car. Once y'all break up, where do you think that car is going? Back to yeah. him. Exactly. Yeah, see, that stuff turned her on. Used one of his cars, and then he dumped me kind of out of the blue. And the only reason why <laughs> I knew he dumped me, he wasn't having a conversation with me about it. He just disappeared for like a week, and then he texted me one day and said, I'm outside, come get my car. <laughs> he actually said, can you just... Yeah, what you just said, he did some <laughs> repossession. <laughs> yep. So we no longer together no more. I'm out front. Can you come out here and give me my keys to my car? Yep. The concierge test. And I said, no, I can come give you the key. And so I go with him to the car. He just gets in the car drive. And I was like, um, do you want to say something to me? Like, we've been together a year. Like, we have all, like, we were literally going the next month to, for him to meet my family in Arkansas. And he goes, I'm good at making money. I'm not good at this. It's not that he's good at making money and not good at this being a relationship. It means he cares about making money. He doesn't care about this. Knowing that I'm a great girl, an amazing woman, a beautiful spirit, I watched him throw me away like a piece of trash. He just- The guy told you that he don't mess with women <laughs> up to 12 months. And so your, your, your time is expiring. And he that he breaks up with you. Now it's a big deal. But he already mm-hmm. told you it was up. Yep. So why did she think he was going to change? I she, don't know. She should get herself together and not worry about no rich dude that's a damn jerk. And if that's right. the type of dude she want to be with, she got to deal with the consequences. Right. She don't have to do much. He got that money. She don't have to do anything. And when he broke up with her, that's what pissed her off. That's what that's all the about. Territory. This was like, eh, I can get 10 more of you tomorrow. With my money. So cold. (laughs) About two months went by, and then he just texted me out of the blue. Hey, Taylor. And I'm like, are you kidding me? He won another pop of that. Like, like nothing happened. (laughs) And I asked him, are you married? It seems to me like you could easily be married, but I just didn't know that because we only saw each other like once a month. He got immediately so defensive. I was like, if you're not married, you would just say you're not married. You wouldn't get so mad. He goes, we only saw each other a couple times. Just get over it. For him to tell me, just get over it. I was like, okay. Okay, so he had texted her, what's up? Now, he he was thinking that she's going to say, hey, yeah, meet me such and such, because he wanted some of that chocolate, as you just said. Then yeah. when you, then when you, he, she came hey, with and, this. And my, the, not to cut you off, but the thing is, this is their relationship. This is how it always been. So how is he wrong to expect that? Right. She's somebody I could just call and get a piece from now and then. Right. She 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 sent him that angry text and that's what pissed him off. Like, well, damn, this is what we've been doing. So now all of a sudden you upset. I'm over it. One hundred percent. After you being hurt over and over, I was like, I didn't care anymore. Like that wasn't love. Like love doesn't hurt like that. Love doesn't lie. Love is not deceitful. Even though I didn't get closure from him directly, I received closure and acceptance for myself through therapy. When oh, that was goodness. over, it what was type a- of closure? Y'all was never really together. In her head, he was. <laughs> it was shock because he made me believe it was real, and I think that's actually probably the cruelest thing. Because when you get to the point when you're 50 years old as a man and you've never been married, you never had kids, never been with anyone more than a year, you know exactly what you're doing. That's what you do. Exactly. Well, he didn't so already you know what he was into. Right, he told you that. 
so you should already open up. Like, oh shit, my time is expiring. Like mm-hmm. you said, she shouldn't have never gave her car up. Should have never gave her car up. She should have said, well, look, like you said, well, look, I just put my car in the, in the garage. I'll pay for storage or a garage or something like that. Park that shit over your family member's house, put a covering over that joint and call it a day. Exactly. A few days, the tears started to fall and I thought they would never stop. I cried so many tears. Tears were like, you still crying? Like, we don't have no more tears for you. And, but then I remembered who I was and I snapped out of it. The gold digger. <laughs> when he left, you know, already that's a huge weight lifted. It's like, okay, all the that toxic energy that he's bringing, it's gone. So now it's about, you know, building myself back up. Yeah, Jazz, you're allowed to have a weak moment. You're allowed to sulk in your apartment Friday through Sunday, but on Monday, you got to get up. Like, it has to be a new day. You know, you can be a victim of something in a moment but you can't be a victim. And this is the point they're talking, they're going to talk about what they're doing now, who they dating or or they by by themselves or whatever. So did I get my big pretty apology wrapped in a bow from Kendrick? No. Did I ever get acknowledgement? Did I ever get him making that call to me one day and saying, I'm so, so sorry for what I put you through? I never got that. But at the same time, like, I'm at a point in my life where I just don't need it. And you still I wasn't you would have brought it up. Mm-hmm. That person who was scared to date again, even though my situation went south, I started looking again. I am dating, but I'm dating someone long distance. That's an <laughs> oh, interesting <shit>. situation. <laughs> I would say. Setting herself up for failure. It's a beautiful relationship that we have together. This is, I think, one of the happiest moments I've had in a long time in girl, relationship. She just is like the other girl now. That long distance see you when I see you in town type shit. Yeah. That shit ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Where it all just kind of aligns and you guys are kind of on the same page and career wise and uh, financially just it works. So, I mean, to be able to talk to someone on the phone for hours and have great conversation or travel together and just have a great time with no fighting and no arguing, just enjoying each other, that is something I've been looking for for a long time. So I deleted my dating apps and I have always felt like I am somebody who is better in person. So I've been proactively going out into my life to actually meet people in person, make real connections. Every time that there's an opportunity where someone invites me out, I say yes. I professionally work in music festivals doing glitter, makeup, and body art. So I really work on keeping my energy open so that I can receive the opportunities for someone to approach me. I'm always smiling, trying not to have my head down or be on my phone so that if someone does want to come up to me and approach me, I'm open and available to it. I am a very confident person. I do believe in myself. I know that like my person's out there. He's out there somewhere looking for me. And when he finds me, it'll everything Does she got great. glitter glue to her leg? Yes. I have met people and I do dates. But it's interesting because now I know going on a date, like there's nothing that a man can do for me that I can't do for myself. For this (laughs) transition, Uh (laughs) the most important thing to me was being with a man, with having a husband, with having that, because I'm such a relationship girl. Like I love love, I'm very loyal. And but yet the guy, James, told you that he don't mess with, uh, you got a 12-month window, and he, he dumping you, but all of a sudden you believe in love. Once he said that to you, that have been a, that have been cold, cold for her to get the fuck out of that relationship. If she said, or, or, or stay and know that the clock is ticking after 12, uh, 12 months is a wreck. Right. And even though I can play the dating game, that was not my preference. But I'm actually happier now that I've ever been in my life, and I'm single now. It's kind of crazy, but. you are. I met Derek at work. I mean, you're not supposed to fraternize at work, but you know, get it how you live. And what I loved about Daryl is Daryl saw me for me. He saw a girl that was in love. Boy, they don't look nothing like her right there. 
She looked better uh, without all that makeup and shit to me. Mm-hmm. Marvel, who loved geek culture, who was. Oh, so she's also she just came out of the geek closet that she likes uh, comic books and all that shit. No, too. that's what he liked. And she's acting like she liked it. <laughs> Into film scores. And he she never mentioned that, that stuff. The other so girl came like, right out and said, this is what I'm into. If she was into that, she would have put that in the forefront, too. Mm-hmm. He saw the girl underneath the red lipstick. And he's also the, the kindest man that you will ever meet. You know what he asked my mother when he goes home? Is there anything I could fix? Is there anything that you need me to do in the house? You know, when girls be saying what kind of man they want, oh, I need somebody tall, he gotta be brown skin. It's like, yeah, 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 no, 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 that's all well and good. Get somebody who's gonna ask your mama what she need around the house. That's who no, you want, shit. and that's who I got, and I've been winning. I've never asked since. a uh, mom, is there something here I can fix? Okay. That sounds crazy to me. Yes. Uh, young ladies out there, don't listen to this woman because <laughs> you know shit. First of all, first of all, number one is uh, if if I'm if I'm this new guy, I will have a conversation with her because there's no way you gonna go on a TV show talking about another man and you already in a relationship. Now, no, if you are in a relationship, you should be happy. That's in the past and that's it. You don't have to talk about uh, what what going on with you and the dude doing. And like you said, when she was talking about the guy, she's smiling ear to ear, big pearly white teeth, just as just as blind to me. And if I was Daryl, I'd look at that and be like, well, what the hell? Exactly. Daryl ain't taking her serious. <laughs> no, he yes, he is. Time right now. No, yes, he is, because he asked her mom, does he does she need yeah, anything okay. to fit? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh shit, love lessons. I need people's words to align with their actions. Make sure what he's Oh, their actions was well enough. What the hell is she talking about? None of those guys said I want to be with you or none of that stuff. My man called her every now and again. They go roll around and that's it. So what's she talking about? My man had knocked his teeth out, had a concussion, and all he thinking about was hitting them draws and then splitting in the morning. <laughs> exactly telling you he's going to do he actually does make him come to you stop chasing after him stop running behind him stop just saying okay and yes to whatever he suggests make him put more of the effort in and stop being so available to him like you're not gonna be able to blindside me and and love bomb me and sing me a story about how oh one day we'll be together maybe tomorrow you can say all the things that you want yes i'm gonna come see you maybe 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 but until i actually see you do it i'm just not gonna believe you when I started with Kendrick, there were a few red flags in the beginning. So then when I moved on, I knew. Up uh, Red flags again in the beginning. Oh, I see this red flag. Don't do it. So when I see guys that do not know how to control their emotions, even on a small scale, I don't deal with them. Well, what about your emotions? Do you control those? Because you was whooping ass too. Uh-huh. And she's still talking it- about like she's meeting guys and she's looking for the red flags. So if you and Daryl got a thing going on, where's this other stuff? Why are you exactly. still out there talking about guys and stuff? Exactly. It comes to relationships and boundaries, I don't give a lot of chances today. Being depressed and sad and angry, I always promise myself I'm not going back there. So when that disrespect and those red flags start to show, I'm very good about walking away. Always- you never met his parents. What the <laughs> hell is she talking about? And you've been knowing this dude when you were 16, and y'all had a kid at 23, and you've never met his parents. So what is she talking about? Say my cutoff game is A1 today. No, it ain't. <laughs> the biggest lottery ticket I ever got was when he shut that door in my face. Because I realized a couple things. One is nobody's coming to save you. <laughs> so save yourself. Two, if you're unhappy, it's your fault. What and did she I do? Have this- what did she do? Uh, for a living, you mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, is she a nurse? And I know she works in, in, in healthcare because those pictures, earlier pictures, she had on uh, scrubs and the stethoscope. So I think okay. she's like a nurse or something. Glow now because it's not dependent on relationship status. It's not dependent on a man. And it's crazy because I think older women have probably tried to tell me this, but you just don't get it till you get it. You know, as oh, shit. black women, I learned a lot about being strong. Like I have to be strong, strong, strong. And All the- that strong shit means she'll whoop your ass. She 5'10", too. 
please. The reason so my man just walked in and just started punching and pushing on her, and she just sat there like in the corner, balled up. Remember when uh uh the Salt and Pepper movie, how Tretch was all aggressive mm-hmm. and all that stuff, and Pepper was all like ball- balled into the corner, please. Yeah, exactly. Why? And, uh uh Pepper is a big a big lady, uh tall wise, not weight. Uh, she's a big lady, so ain't no way in the world that man gonna be walking in and pushing her around and she ain't gonna do anything back. No, she was hitting him or they was fighting each other one way or the other. She said she picked up the damn uh, floor fan and cracked him with it, then picked up a computer, cracked him with it. This is like some crazy aggression. This ain't no one-off type. I just went snapped on him. Right. Pray to such pain is because you didn't know how glorious you really were. So let me tell you, you're glorious. So when you meet people, you have to make sure they meet you where you are. Do not, whatever you do, when you are looking for love, whether it be friendship or relationship, don't meet people where they are. Make them come up to you because, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, you're worthy. So, all right, y'all. That was our <laughs> all the single ladies episode. So, what you all think about girls, this? All these girls, all these girls need professional help. Mm-hmm. They need to talk to somebody, have a sit down, and and, and see what's going on in their head. And set, and the reason they act that way is because none of them had a dad or or positive male role figure in their life. Bingo. Yep. Yep. So, anything else you want to add? Uh, no, nah, because we kept jumping in, commenting, and so most of my stuff, I, we, we went over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow. All right, y'all. You can reach your judgmentals on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at PNL Judgmentals, Instagram at the two underscore judgmentals, or you can email us at PNL Judgmentals at gmail.com. Sorry, Phil. Most of y'all is right, associates, so I be on my dolo. Hold up, walk that wall, hold the phone. You think all I do is rap? I can do it on my own. That's why I produce the track. Don't wonder where my crew is at. They'll be back. Niggas see me walking on the block and look like, who is that? Who is that? People always want to know where my friends is at. Like, we attach. I don't need no crew to produce the same effect. How lame is that? Niggas say that we drawling, but really we balling. They mad because they falling. We Right and they successful.